So guys, so today I wish it would have been a fun video of doing something with the car. Instead, I need to fix a bunch of what I would call small issues that cause big problems. So yesterday, test drove the car for fun, tried to up the boost a bit and kept on hitting fuel cut. Wastegate was not opening. This little vacuum tee is what caused that issue. I'm probably certain you can't see that, but this end of it melted, causing no vacuum to get to the wastegate, so it was not opening. Um, I keep on killing O2 sensors. Um, the f it must be in just a terrible spot or something. It's really annoying. Like I won't even drive the car, and it'll somehow kill the sensor uh, on the next startup. So that's something I need to do. I want to relocate the bung of the O2 somewhere else. So today basically just going to be changing things up. So this is where the O2 is now. I really didn't think it was going to be an issue, but apparently so. So I'm thinking I need to put it more like over here, facing upwards towards the firewall, um, which is kind of a pain. I really, like I said, I thought it was going to be fine. Uh, I could probably even put it like more on an angle, but further down. And then I need to see what I decided to do with the vacuum tee. I also want to redo the vacuum line on this side because it's also teed uh, over here. Probably can barely see it, but it's teed here and it goes to the blow valve and the wastegate. And I just want the wastegate to have its own line and the blow valve to have its own line. So I need to refresh and all that. Uh, because I'm just going to cause more and more issues if I do things kind of half fast. I want to say, because it's been working, and now I'm seeing little things that are failing here and there, especially little stupid things. So if you could fix that, we'll have a good running car. All right, so the downpipe is out. I got the new O2 sensor. I marked the spot where I want to put it. Um, as you can see, or can't really see, but the O2 sensor was basically probably just getting hit with constant super hot gases it was relatively close so i think that should work i need to redo the uh vacuum lines like i already said uh, i don't have work tomorrow because it's martin luther king day so this will have to wait um so we'll see you then well i remade my boost leak test i don't know if you can hear that but we have leaks there I found a leak down there. I'm sure there's more leaks. So I got a lot of work cut out for me because uh, I didn't realize I had this many leaks. So uh, yeah, wish me luck. Okay, so yesterday was super eventful. I um, went to go take this, or this was a boost leak. I went to go tighten the T-ball clamp. It stripped, so I cut it with a hacksaw. And then I decided I was going to hit it off, and uh, I uh, cut myself pretty good. And I super glued it. So, as far as I know, right now, the boost leaks are all fixed. I ordered a new coupler and a new T-bolt clamp here. Um, this intake air temp sensor, it was leaking, let me see, right here in between this brass or whatever and this plastic connector. This part... I couldn't cross-reference. It's apparently a special, not special, but it's only for the Japanese cars. So like other 1Js, including this one. So I had to order it from Japan. That'll take like a month. And I had a small leak here. So I'm just gonna replace this line. So uh, yeah, kind of went good, kind of didn't go well. So got to wait for that stuff. Here's that clamp for reference. Uh, yeah, that's like a razor blade. So yeah, keep in mind, these things are sharp as hell if you cut them. I am super impatient. So I bought this hose clamp from AutoZone. It is supposed to be good up to 100 PSI. I think it's meant for more like diesel trucks, but uh, boost is boost. So I'm gonna try this. There's the IAT leak. Throttle body does not appear to be leaking. So 
far so good. I'm gonna go through everything and check. So as of now, our intake air temp sensor is the only thing leaking boost, which is insane. It's not even leaking from here where the over, uh, copper washer is, it's leaking between the sensor. All right, so not the best of welds. I'm still practicing, but it's welded up and the bung is ready to be used. All right, now that we got the bung welded up, I'm gonna rewrap this downpipe, uh, put the O2 sensor on, fix a few vacuum tees, put everything back together pretty much. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I super glued the intake air temp sensor. I just boo uh, did a boost leak test. It seems to not be leaking anymore, which is good. I tested everything else, nothing else is leaking. Uh, I got a very small leak from this uh, vacuum tee and I just redid these vacuum lines. And that vacuum T, as you can see, let me get a better angle. This one's got a bunch of bubbles. So I'm just gonna have to order some like ones that for sure will work because these are all just crappy ones. They got them from the auto parts store. And of course they're all different sizes. Like the top will be small and the sides will be bigger. I don't understand why they do this shit, but that's something I gotta change but I could probably put everything together in the meantime because those are small things that I could do when the car is actually down. So let me put everything back together. Woo! Oh yeah, and I wrapped the damp pipe. So that's all ready to go. All right, so the car is back together. I have not started. I probably won't because it's kind of late. As you notice, or you may not notice, there's a new intake compared to this little thing. Is much larger and I think it looks much fitting and better in the in, uh, in the engine bay if you're wondering this is the part number for this exact filter um, I don't know that was kind of bugging me because I just thought it looked kind of stupid with that tiny little filter so to go over everything over again basically it has started as a wastegate issue which turned into a vacuum T that melted. And then I redid an O2 sensor because O2 sensors keep on dying. And then I redid this, fixed a bunch of leaks, ordered an intake air temp sensor, but I think it's good for now with the super glue. I will have to reorder some uh, vacuum tees because these still suck. So I'm gonna have to find like the correct size and everything because the one I got from O'Reilly Auto Parts is like, a uh, bunch of random crap so that's not gonna work all right so it's like the next two days later i'm going to test it cross our fingers that everything works right we don't have any issues and we're gonna give it a drive so let's see how that goes you see that those three lines means the sensor is not working so at this point i think it's an am gauge issue that's shorting out the sensor or something because i did everything i replaced all these sensors and it died almost instantly so tomorrow i'm gonna call am and try to get a follow-up if not i'm going to get rid of it i'm gonna have to replace it with something because i need a wide band in the meantime let's test drive this thing all right let's see what the butt dyno says that was working because I do not hear it. I hear turbo. That's all turbo right there. The car feels good though. Doesn't feel weird to me. All right, so I'm at a gas station because the car overheat, but not like crazy overheated. It's a little bit hotter than I would like to see. The fans I put in didn't kick on. I figured it out thanks to my good friend Adrian. I called him and he helped me out. When I get home, I'll show you exactly what I did to fix it. This still pisses me off, but uh, yeah, let's get home. All right, so I am home now. I will seal that corrosion. Well, I think that was my issue. So I need to get a new controller. Um, there's corrosion in here I found. I'm gonna replace this. Uh, this one has corrosion, great. This kind of looks blown, 
maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. I don't know. So yeah, I need a new fan controller. Uh, what else went wrong? I think that was it. So yeah. Oh yeah. O2 sensor took a shit. Fan controller took a crap. Um, oh yeah, this is what I did. Uh, my buddy, like I said, Adrian, he did basically went over the diagram with me when i was at the gas station um this green you're supposed to just grab uh put it to power and it bypasses everything but i think the fact that the controller took a poop we had to bypass all that so i disconnected this and we this is our ground so we already have power directly to fan basically what the relay does is it grounds it so it kicks on so we just, luckily this green wire came out and we just grounded it here and I was able to drive home. <sighs> Nothing but issues one after another. So yeah, this, uh, uh, this is going to conclude the video and uh, I'm sorry if it wasn't super exciting, but uh, part of working on cars is fixing issues and uh, Apparently I keep finding new issues, but it's good that we find it here, close to the house. We're not doing anything crazy. Basically just fixing, testing, fixing, testing. So till next time where we're gonna fix more things. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, but uh, you got questions about the car, case swaps, sores, Toyotas, 1Js, hit me up on Instagram, GZChris92. Till next time, later.